You don't need to use C-clamps. Uh, rubber bands are great and easy and cheap and all that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the canton chain. And if you twist it, it doesn't work as well. Okay. It so wrong. the first thing we're going to do is find <laughs> the middle. Safe. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This has an exact center. And we're going to lay an inch of what each of these groups in one section. And you, you don't want to do this right up against the chain because it won't allow you to spread out that far. And actually, we're probably going to have to take this tight tie out to get the warp spread just in the wrapper. I think my rattle must only be half inches. It's yeah, some rattles have half inches. Um, I I have my baby wolf rattle set up in half inches, and I either use every I I use half inches for really fine threads. Sometimes for tartan, sometimes for um, like tartan set at 30 epi. Sometimes for linen, but for the things that I just want to do inch bunches, I just put it in every other rattle space. So you can. This is split, right? No. Are you making a video? <laughs> oh, really? that one is. Yeah, good, good, good. Okay. All right, so once you have everything in, some um, rattles have a top that screws on with wing nuts or what have you. And um, also, this is a homemade rattle. It's just a piece of one by four with cotter pins hammered into the spots. They're, and you can use finish nails for the same thing. It's pretty easy to make yourself a rattle. Um, most of us can manage a hammer, and if you measure very carefully and use a pencil and mark it up, you know, it's not too hard. So then uh, the cotter pins are nice because they have a nice bump at the top that keeps the um, rubber bands from falling off. <laughs> so you can just put a bunch of rubber bands on and just make sure they overlap. And I think this one has a, a whopper in the center, which is nice, or you can just make a mark or something. Although, I wonder why that red line is there. But I think it just got stuck yeah. in some, because see, it comes clear over here. And um, you can either eyeball or measure. This guy is slightly out of whack, but it's, it looks pretty good. Yeah. And on the wolf looms, this is the center here, where the jack pivot is. And they've moved the... Um, the heddle bar keepers off to one side because you can't have two things in the same space. So, okay. So we're in the rattle. And now we're going to go through the back. And we're going to unwind this fella. And take it around the back beam. And these are... Um, I guess these limbs come with this tie-up cord now, yeah, but the older sure. ones don't have it, and um, they're really worth getting. Mm -hmm. Here we are. We have a warp, and we're going to bring it through, and you want to make sure it's right side up, which is, having put it in the rattle, you can see when you hold this up that it's not twisted, that it's not, doesn't have a twist in it anywhere. And this is, has a... Um, you know, it has a flatness. You've got a top and a bottom to your ties here and your cross. So we know that this is right side up. So, aha. This warp did not get ties at the very end, and, which is not the end of the world, but it would be nice if it had them. Because we could lose loops here if we weren't careful. So one of my million and six ties you look flipped over. All right, this is probably the beginning or the end. All right. It's just funny that there are some coming up from the bottom. I know, but here they are. They've got to go somewhere. Yeah. That's true. So I think that's good. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is loosen these guys and slide them off. And try not to drop them on the floor. And I just slip the whole thing on the beam for starters. I know I'm going to have to spread it out, but that it's it's on the stick now, and that makes me happy. And one of these is in the exact center. And because we've centered the rattle, we can find the middle group. Now, 
If somebody will hold either end of this, just because I don't have enough hands and my nose itches. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> so my scratcher. So we'll take these ties out because we're secure, and we know we have the loose tie, which is holding our emergency insurance policy across. So out come all these ties, and we can split this group. So here's half. So we know we can go ahead and I slip this on my fingers. Okay, holders. Move that center tie into place, and we have that tie set up. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, you can pull back a little bit on the warp, and we can use the little more. No, well, maybe not. Okay. Oh, we can take the counting chain out now. This is actually one of my favorite parts. <laughs> <laughs> At least when you got a crochet chain and you get to go zip. <laughs> got to figure out which end is which. I'm good at them. It doesn't take much to make me happy. Make <laughs> <laughs> sure that, um, let me have the stick for a second. You want to make sure that the stick is located properly, is centered, so that when it reaches the, the back beam, it will fit inside the, the brake. So you want to make sure it's not over here. Uh, so I think we can probably move everybody over a little bit. But that's our dead center. Okay, so. Okay, so pull back a little, and we just want to be able to see where the, um, this is one of the only times you get to stick your fingers in your warp, at least in my class. You can do whatever you want in the privacy of your own home. <laughs> okay, so we're just looking to see how spread out it needs to be. And what the rattle does is it spreads the warp approximately to the right width, so that when you wind it on the beam, it's not all lumpy and bumpy. It's fairly even, and it'll, it will be able to come evenly off the back beam for its entire journey. So my question is, do I need to move one more set of ties? And I think this little loop here needs to come off and go on the other side of that tie. So now we're going to come your way, Julie. So slip the loop on, put the tie on, slip the loop back, and we'll do the same thing on the other side, and that should take care of us. The tie-up cord is really nice for this job because it, it, you can get tie-up cord to be precisely the same length because of the way it's manufactured. The, the spacing between the loops is exactly the same. Now, did we move two over on that side? Mm -hmm. Good, look at you. Mm -hmm. Funny little tangle there. So I'm going to go ahead and move two on this side too. It looks like to me that there's a few threads here that need to be moved over. Can I move them over? In the rattle? Yeah. Sure. Okay, I'm done wiggling the warp, so. Look at him. So, before we start winding, we want to make sure that the ties are lined up so that the, the back apron rod is going to pull straight. Just make sure everything is super tidy. Get the warp more or less straight on here. Well, and when you pull on it, it's going to even, it'll also even itself a little. Yeah. You put well, the rattle on the beater here. Yeah. Is that we could button? have the rattle on the back beam too. That's what I was wondering. If and we'll do one that way. The next yeah. one we do is going to be on the back. Mm. What is this stick called? This is an apron rod. Okay, apron rod. Some looms have aprons, have cloth aprons, and the rod will be sort of inserted in loops. Right this one right that, here. This, yeah, yeah, the Maycomers, some of the Leclerc's have aprons. Um, if you put an apron on your loom, you want to make sure that it's grain true and really, really straight. Because if you get your warp, if your warp starts out crooked, it's going to be crooked the whole journey. So 10 yards, 6 yards, whatever. Okay, so we're going to leave this loose tie-in. That's your ultimate insurance policy for complete disaster. And then we're going to uh, start winding. So the paper goes to the back. Normally, I would put a layer of sticks uh, on the beam and then start the paper. And the sticks are to raise the, the warp above the cordage. 
which is less of an issue with modern looms, more so with the old barn looms that tended to have bigger cordage and sometimes weren't really designed with a place for things to go. There's a, there's a couple of barn looms that I've seen that have a slot in the warp beam and you can tie your warp on and drop it into the slot. It's lovely. I mean, people had all kinds of good ideas uh, in terms of engineering. There, there aren't very many slats here. They're really, really skinny ones. Um, what I do at home is I go to Home Depot or Lowe's and I get lath. And I get them to cut it for me to whatever size. And I have, I don't know, two dozen or so sticks for each of my rooms. Because I'll also use them for the first layer of cloth as it hits the cloth beam. Because you've all seen what happens to your cloth when it goes over the knots or mm -hmm. however you tie it on. It gets really lumpy. and So I put in a layer of sticks and it just evens it out. So um, we can... Okay, so to get ready to wind, you're going to take... Um, and this is easier once the, the apron rod's gone around because you don't have the weight of it pulling on you. Right now we, we're having a little bit of a, a tussle here. And the rattle lets you see where things should be, so they make it easy. So I'm going to hold this, I'm going to pull on it, you're holding the beam up, yes. I'm going to snap it, I'm going to spank it, but I'm not going to stick my fingers in it. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> <laughs> I love okay. it with my fingers. So whoever is at the back of the loom, I, try not to, um, I, I can do this myself with the wolf looms. It's a little awkward, and it's probably really funny to watch. Um, but I stand at the side, I hold the warp at this end, I crank and I stop and adjust the paper. It's tricky. It's much easier to warp any loom with two people, but you can do it by yourself. The other option is, to take this warp under the breast beam and up over the top of the castle and hold it from the back, where it may be easier to crank, hold the warp, and 